You want to support Roller Mark Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Mark Unfiltered by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. I'm going to tie it to uh, a second story, uh, which deals with uh, Angela Davis. And that is, of course, remember the uh, Birmingham Civil Rights Institute. Uh, they said that they rescinded the Fred Shuttlesworth Award that was going to go to her uh, for her work. But it got all kinds of drama, led to several board members resigning. Well, guess what? Now she is going to be accepting the award. Hmm. Again, this is in Alabama. And so uh, this is the quote from the president and CEO of the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute looking ahead. The Birmingham Civil Rights Institute remains steadfast in its commitment to preserving and promoting civil and human rights and being a source of inspiration and inclusion to the community as the struggle continues. And so, again, going forward, uh, it was all kinds of drama uh, when uh, they chose to present her the award, then rescind it because of some Jewish critics there in Alabama. Now, and the reason I'm putting these two stories together, because it's not just Alabama. Uh, but you're dealing with a governor who, 74 years old, blackface, uh, in blackface in college, somehow didn't think it was a big, big deal. And then you fast forward to present day, where you have Birmingham Civil Rights Institute award named after the freedom fighter, freedom fighter, Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth, late Fred Shuttlesworth, and, uh, and criticism of Angela Davis which is kind of crazy, knowing full of where she stands in the eyes of black people. This is why I try, to, I try to explain to people, America still has never dealt with the issue of race. America is uncomfortable with white folks accepting responsibility for folks like Kay Ivey wearing blackface as a college student who's, who's now governor. So for the people who say all oh, these things are simple mistakes, yeah, but those are the people who later become senators and governors and members of Congress and mayors. And then you have this other story where here you have a black freedom fighter still making folks uncomfortable when they choose to fight for freedom for other people as well. This, to me, is the dichotomy of being black in America. No, absolutely. I would say, you know, it's very interesting. In the 50 years since Kay Ivey died in blackface, you know, at that time, Angela Davis, one of the leading minds in the country, arguably, put out of the University of California, Berkeley, by Ronald Reagan and the Board of Trustees. And if she had a P earned PhD in philosophy, student of Herbert Marcuse, shaking up everything on the West Coast. First of all, they tried to take her life by trying to hang her on this assassination of this judge in a courtroom. She's on the FBI's most wanted list, and even black people wouldn't deal with her. What has happened in those 50 years since? She has gone from being on the fringe of many movements to being a beloved figure in her native Birmingham, and Kay Ivey has ascended to the governorship of Alabama because everybody in front of her was involved in all kind of scandals, sex scandals and, and graft scandals. And so in Alabama, like in America, Whiteness protects you from all your sins, all the crimes, whether it be blackface, whether it be the Ivy's predecessor who had affairs and paid them off. And now you have a woman like Angela Davis, who is a big um, uh, person uh, who is fighting against the criminal uh, justice systems, incarceration, mass incarceration, this kind of thing. Angela Davis has now been embraced. They can't stop the train of demographics, brother. Alabama has changed forever. But when you look at someone like Governor Kay Ivey, she has real power. Yeah. Right. That's what frightens me. Yeah. And let's forget 50 years ago. I don't think that that is the worst thing she's probably done in her life, considering <laughs> where she grew up and who she is. Right. And I'm just being honest with you. Yeah. But you're looking at someone like Angela Davis, who is a beloved figure in our community, but she doesn't have the same kind of power. Mm -hmm. I don't see how she is a threat other than to white supremacy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting because I, for the life of me, every time I see these stories, I can't understand what the appeal is about blackface with white people. I don't get it. I mean, it happens almost every year, usually around February, usually around Halloween, we get some school administrator or some person of authority who is saying, hey, I want to try this on and see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. But you have that sort of, uh, Greg, you put it very well, the dichotomy in which you have somebody who went from the fringe to the mainstream, Angel Davis, and now you have an entire political movement on the right that's going from the fringe to the mainstream. Yeah. And so I think that it's a really interesting commentary on where we're going as a country. I don't know what the answer is. I mean, especially once you try to get people to confront what the problem is and you have a series like the 1619 Project from the New York Times and all kinds of people are calling it crazy and fake. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's, it's a willful resistance 
to acknowledging something that everybody knows is fact. Mm -hmm. All right, folks, back to that whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, you heard me talk a lot about MarijuanaStock.org. Why? Because I want to keep you informed of investment opportunities that make sense. We've all watched the growth of the cannabis industry. A recent report by New Frontier Data estimates the global cannabis market at over $340 billion. We know that marijuana legalization is sweeping the country state by state. We also know that marijuana has a good cousin, the hemp plant, with a much higher concentration of CBD. That means hemp gives you all the medical benefits of marijuana without getting you high. Until recently, hemp farming was practically illegal in the U.S. and heavily regulated by the DEA. However, that changed with the 2018 Farm Bill, making it legal to grow hemp CBD in the U.S. and thus creating one of the largest commodities worldwide. Of course, what do they need? Land to grow all the plants, and that's where the folks with 420 Real Estate come in. Their business model is simple. They buy land that supports hemp CBD grow operations and lease it to licensed high-paying tenants. That's right. They are hemp CBD landlords, and you can get in on the action. Now, what they've done for the folks at Roland Martin Unfiltered, they allow you to invest as little as 200 bucks up to $10,000. Originally, it was $500 to participate in this crowdfunding campaign. And again, this is a 340 billion dollar industry that is still growing and you can participate with as little as two hundred dollars to invest go to marijuanastock.org that's marijuanastock.org you can get in the game and get in the game now now back to your Roland martin unfiltered video